Hello, and welcome to this overview session on SAP Business One Release 9.1. The main objective of this session is to provide you a solid overview of the new features developed for SAP Business One 9.1 and SAP Business One 9.1 version for SAP HANA. You will understand the business benefit and value this new release can bring to an SAP Business One customer. Release 9.1 is a successor release of Release 9.0 and is available in two versions. SAP Business One 9.1, which runs on Microsoft SQL, and SAP Business One 9.1, version for SAP HANA. The development focus behind Release 9.1 was beside functional enrichment, the simplification of usage, implementation, and operation of SAP Business One. This slide summarizes the enhancements grouped by business logic and localization, reporting and analysis, extensibility and SDK enhancements, infrastructure and architecture, lifecycle management and support, as well as specific enhancements for SAP Business One 9.1 version for SAP HANA. Business logic and localization. A completely new module has been added to manage resources required in the production process. With this, it is possible to include machine, labor, and other costs. Resources will, of course, will capture the time units needed to produce as well the associated costs. This way, it is possible to capture per resource type up to 10 different costs in the end product. The timing aspect will benefit planning as now it is easy to identify bottlenecks or resource shortages in the production and thus optimize the usage of available resources. End product pricing will be easier and more precise, as now it is possible to identify and include all resource costs required to produce an item. Resources always support advanced GL account determination, even if this has not been enabled on database level. It is possible to avail of the standard GL account determination as well, depending which approach is the preferred one. Bill of materials row types now include item, resource, and text. This will allow to include job descriptions, guidance, and finally, division of bill of materials into steps as in the physical production process. This will increase the visibility of production process progress as well this will work as step-by-step -step guide for the production personnel. Individual or several rows can be moved up and down by clicking on the arrow buttons on the right-hand side. For this, the rows have to be highlighted and then moved to the desired position. Values of user-defined fields on bill of material will be carried over to production order. This will enable further customization. With bill of materials component management, it is possible to mass update bill of materials. Items, resources, or texts can be added via one step to several bills of materials. This will make the maintenance of bills of materials easier. Production orders have now the same new line items as introduced for the bill of materials. It is possible to include additional quantities, just like in bill of materials. Even the same arrow buttons to move rows up and down have been included. This makes management of production process easier. Production orders can be customized to reflect the production process exactly step by step. Furthermore, there are several options to modify data on row level in case there are differences to the bill of material. Inventory item cost valuation will enable the tracking of individual items cost. Item cost is based on batch or serial number costing. Items managed by batches or serials will have their individual costs throughout the life cycle, thus enabling the determination of exact gross profit. Cost variances, for example, Batches bought at and more affordable price will be reflected in gross profit. This will enable to capture price variances and fluctuation, which is common in many trades. Furthermore, this feature will enable revaluation on serial or batch level, allowing, for example, lower prices for perishable goods that are approaching best before date. Small businesses have the same drive to grow like large enterprises. Over time, they add more product lines to their businesses, open stores in other locations, or try to sell in additional market segments. Business expansion requires a company to manage its business by separating business units. The feature, Multiple Branches in SAP Business One, 
allows a company to model its business units as branches. Managing by branches means that all transactions have to be created for a dedicated branch. This ensures that one can always track and analyze all business activities by branches via reporting. The concept behind multiple branches also include a strict assignment of warehouses to branches. This makes sure that all postings are consistent within the branches. Further, branch assignment can be done for business partners to restrict the usage of a business partner in transactions. Small businesses can benefit from multiple branches because they will master complexities of having separate business units. In material resource planning, the possibilities to include or exclude sources of demand and supply have been vastly enhanced. Now, document types that before used to be outside selection criteria can be captured in material resource planning. To mention some other improvements, new option minimum maximum will allow to set inventory levels to maximum via MRP. New field in item master data, component warehouse, will benefit planning of production process. This can be sent to bill of materials line or parent item document line. This is there to gather required production assets at one location. These, boosted by other improvements, will enable the optimization of MRP process. Blanket agreements have received many improvements. Blanket agreement fulfillment report can now be run with more selection criteria. Authorization scope has been expanded. And now we can link payment methods to individual blanket agreements instead of using the default business partner payment method. To avail of this option, document settings for blanket agreements have to be considered, meaning the blocking of multiple blanket agreements for same AP or AR document has to be checked. Advanced GL account determination has already been around for some time, but to round up the migration process from earlier releases, there now is an option to export the determination rules to MS Excel. This can be used, for example, when wanting check to the future settings with the company accountant. For the advanced GL account determination itself, new tabs for resources and WIP mapping have been introduced. WIP mapping can be used, for example, to map the accounts associated with production of a component to a larger entity. Bin locations, for example, if they are shelves, often have a maximum weight until which you are allowed to load articles in it. New in SAP Business 9.1 is that one can maintain a weight in the article master. With the help of this article weight and using the maximum weight of a bin location, SAP Business 1 is now able to automatically check whether the maximum weight would be exceeded if the user is allocating goods to a bin location. This check makes the user aware of overload and helps to avoid shelves collapsing due to overweight. The article weight can also be used to in conversion rules for the conversion of units of measurement. This is especially important for a use case in which a weight unit has to be converted in another kind of unit and vice versa. Additionally, a conversion rule can also take an UDF field of the item master into account. Altogether, the weight and UDF factors for the unit conversion will simplify the conversion rules and gives more flexibility to serve more use cases. If a company has to do mass updates in price lists, it may benefit from the new copy function for discounts which depend on units of measures. The function is integrated in the price list screen where you define the UOM discounts. From here, you can copy UOM dependent discounts to other price lists. A preview function enables you to check the results beforehand. You can directly start to generate or view pick lists in the transactions AR reserve invoices, inventory transfer requests, and production orders. Second, more parameters for splitting have been added in the pick list generation wizard. These enhancements streamlines the processes and gives more flexibility to handle pick processes. Fixed assets have been boosted by many nice features. From this version onwards, it is possible to cancel depreciation runs by a simple mouse click on the executed run. This, of course, can only be done if no further postings exist in the system. It is possible to cancel out several runs provided the starting point is the latest and then moving on to earlier runs. Cost center information is defaulted from fixed assets master data 
to fixed assets and AR documents. This all sums up to better and more automated usability. Extended tax reporting has been launched to more localizations. The existing functionality has been enhanced. Extended tax reporting enables snapshot-like tax reporting. What was reported back in time can be pulled from the system and it is possible to run Delta reports in case further documents have been added to the system. This provides an easy to use audit trail. Extended tax reporting can be used as a base for electronic tax reporting. A lot of additional localized content shipment has been added to 9.1. A lot of them are aimed to accelerate the implementation for small businesses in selected countries. For example, you can implement a simplified chart of accounts for small businesses including proper determination rules. Reporting and Analysis In SAP Business One 9.1, the standard for printing and reporting is SAP Crystal Reports 2013. It supports Microsoft Windows 8 and Windows Server 2012 and contains further enrichments to support partner and customer. Lifecycle Management and Support The Remote Support Platform, or RSP support, is now available for SAP Business One on both the SAP HANA database and on Microsoft SQL Server. RSP processes and reports got adapted for the SAP HANA database, which will lead to reduced TCO for customers and partners due to automation, faster installation, and reliable upgrades, as well as simplified landscape management. So less time and money is spent on maintenance and support. Extensibility and SDK with SAP Business One 9.1, there's a new lightweight approach available to package and deploy add-ons for SAP Business One. The new tool has the ability to combine different add-on binaries for 32 or 64-bit, as well as related extreme apps in one extension package. The deployment and management of such extension packages is realized via the web-based extension manager platform. Infrastructure and Architecture until 9.0, you can assign transactional authorization directly to users only. With SAP Business One 9.1, authorization can be assigned to permission groups, which can then be assigned to users. This permission group layer allows you to implement role-based authorizations and reduce the administration effort tremendously. If your company does not use certain business functions or processes at all, you can switch them off completely. This simplifies all screens and makes the implementation easier. Different roles within a company require different UI screens in SAP Business One for each user. This makes sure that an employee can only see or change data he is entitled for. And second, screens which have been optimized for specific tasks can improve user experience as well as productivity. Screen adaptation can be easily done by the administrator and by just creating an UI configuration template for a specific role and by adding the forms which are to be edited for this role. The edit options include hiding, inactivating, or relocating fields. By adapting the screens for roles and users, a security concept can be enforced and the user experience as well as the productivity can be increased. On top of that, each user can personalize a screen himself, that is, he can hide, deactivate and relocate fields according to his individual need. The Excel data import tool has been enhanced to include more fields and the option update existing records without adding new records. More data import and integration scenarios can be covered by this tool. In case an user has to deal with transactions with a large number of items, he can enlarge the item table to the full size of the screen. This will give a better overview of the item lines and make editing more comfortable. There is a further way to handle transactions with large number of items. In 9.1, you can copy the whole visible item table and paste it into a spreadsheet like Excel. In the spreadsheet, you can edit the table and copy and paste back the content back to the item table in SAP Business One. Several round-off enhancements have been made in the area of email and printing. There is the option to assign business partner contacts to an email group. With this function, for example, you could create an email group for accounting 
so that SAP Business One can send emails to a department instead of just one contact. Two new output methods available when adding a marketing document, send email and export to PDF. Default email subject and body can be defined for each document. Selected documents from a list are sent as emails to the proper recipients only. Specific to SAP Business One 9.1 version for SAP HANA. With SAP Business One 9.1 version for SAP HANA, a new cockpit based on HTML5 technology is available. There are predefined cockpits for sales, purchasing, finance, and inventory, which will display specified widgets in relation to their permission group role. If there is no permission group assigned, an empty cockpit will be displayed and the user can start from scratch and add widgets from the widgets gallery. As seen on the screenshot, new widgets such as the workbench, count, and recently updated widget are available. The count widget is a simple but powerful feature to get insights of your business. There are five predefined count widgets available for sales orders not delivered, open AR invoices, purchase orders not received, open AP invoices, and open inventory transfer requests. In addition, it's possible to create new count widgets based on user-defined queries where the count widgets counts the query results. The recently updated widget reflects new and updated master data, marketing documents, chart of accounts, and many more types of information. The workbench is a process flow widget to create and manage documents for sales, purchasing, inventory management, and financials. It provides easy access to related functions and guides a user through the key business processes. With SAP Business One 9.1, version for SAP HANA, the pervasive analytics designer has been enhanced. There is now the ability to relate business actions to pervasive dashboards and KPIs. The available action types are open SAP B1 window to open B1 forms such as master data, trigger enterprise search, link to SAP B1 window to show dashboard in sidebar, and open advanced dashboard. See next slide for a description of advanced dashboards. With this new innovative enhancements, it's possible to drill down into business details and translate insights to actions. The advanced dashboards approach gives the ability to create supplementary dashboards to display related data for pervasive dashboards or KPI widgets. By adding filters, the dedicated dashboards and KPIs get broken down to the related data of the initiating source. SAP Business One Service Layer provides server-side web access to system and partner business objects via easy-to-use OData protocol. With this new state-of-the-art technology, it's now possible to read and write data through HTML5 technology in websites or extreme applications. Thank you for attending this course.